Right, click the links, become a member, join the channel, or check out the uh, subscribe star for the videos over there also. Um, I'm doing this video just because I get to use Amy Schumer in a thumbnail. Gosh, she's horrific. But, in her defense, and to her credit, she has been funny in the past. She did a stand-up special, I remember from like 15 years ago, where she was legitimately funny. I don't know if she, how many of those jokes she wrote, and after that she got in trouble for allegedly uh, borrowing some jokes, which it looks like she actually was, but even that might not have been her fault. That might have been her writer's fault, but... um. Uh, she made one movie uh, called Snatched, where, you know, she's a far left-wing globalist nut job, right? But, you know, to be give everyone credit where it's due, she made this movie Snatched, and it's seen, it was kind of a feminist talking point, and she's in some POC, you know, second or third world country, and the men are sitting back watching the women do, do this brutal manual labor, and it was kind of played for last, kind of not, and... She goes, like, so you guys are sitting back and the women are out there farming. So, like, what's up with that? He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're sitting back drinking, you know, homemade beer. And they go, oh, yeah, we're protecting them. She's looking back and forth. It's like the, the point, her point was made. The thing is, um, that's not something you see um, in the narrative now. It's like, yeah, you think it's a feminist narrative. It goes along with them. Feminism isn't really their narrative. Their narrative is really um, blonde man bad. So to see that in a movie, it sticks out a little bit. Um, even Kevin Smith did a scene uh, that went against the narrative a little bit in Jay and Silent Bob Part 2, where he made fun of a group that absolutely must not be mentioned on YouTube, or else you'll, you, won't, you won't get a strike. You'll just disappear from YouTube. Not only that, you'll disappear from Google, too. You're, suddenly your, your email and all your Google services will no longer work. So, they were, you know, again, a mediocre movie. And, he, you know, he made... The thing was, is that movie, he's like, yeah, he made fun of the typical, uh, you know, the Kathleen Kennedy Club or something. It's like, you made the movie in 2020, there's almost no such thing. They're not... Or at least the extent of they're not hurting anyone, they're not breaking any laws, it shouldn't be an issue. So he punched out at them, but then he punched out at this other group, uh, which was a trip. And it was funny, and um, it's kind of refreshing to see. And, you know, another thing, uh, now that I'm completely off topic, is uh, I went online and watched a few of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, because I, 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 I downloaded the, the first to the ninth uh, series. I mean, I, I paid for it online and bought the DVD that I downloaded using a VPN and a bit torrent. But I totally paid for it, and it was funny. And then after that, it started to get woke. And then I went online uh, online last night and, of course, paid for seasons uh, 15 and 14 and watched them. It's like, yes, it was still woke. It's still – they still have a narrative. But for the first time in a few years, they were starting to make fun of the left a little bit. It was like 75% left-wing nonsense. But, like, one out of four of the, the, the jokes was – and they were poking a little bit fun and uh, fun at themselves. I, they're, I assume they got to be far left nut jobs, but it was uh, it was a little weird to see in seasons uh, fifteen and fourteen. I think they're up to eighteen now, but I, I couldn't find those online when I went to go um, legally purchase it using my my VPN and uh, SolarMovie.com. Anyway, so using uh, oh Amy Schumer and Mark Ruffalo, and he's a he's a hard guy to take. I heard uh, Edward Norton is a was a challenging actor to work with. It's like okay, well that's. I am, the funny thing is, I am great at working with difficult people for some reason. I, I don't know why a lot of stuff just just doesn't bother me, because I know it's coming from people who've got, like, trauma, so it just doesn't, like, the, the pain they try to cause just doesn't connect with me for some reason. Um, so that's, that, what's the one thing you're good at? Working with assholes? Is it because you're an asshole? You're, no, I'm not. I am kind and sweet. Um, she should have brought, you should have brought Edward, Edward Norton back in the Hulk instead of this Mark Ruffalo guy who's just... On camera and off camera, he just, uh, he's really hard to take. Even in Wakanda. Because, oh, why didn't, why didn't, we got to work on another white boy in Wakanda? And she solves some puzzle. And he goes, oh, why didn't, why didn't she, goes, why didn't you guys do that? And he goes, oh, I guess we didn't think of that. It's like, aren't you, like, one of the smartest guys in the Marvel Universe? Like, Bruce Banner, some, some super, gene, whatever. It's just all stupid. Anyway, um, so, uh, he, uh, he's triggered by low ratings which like what's beneath the surface of that so people are expressing their opinions and if they go against this this left-wing insane narrative um you don't want them to express those opinions bingo you got it in one i mean that's that's what it boils so like a lot of this stuff kind of boils down to censorship which is one group of people telling you that you shouldn't express your viewpoints because they know better than you and they may couch it couch it in a lot of you know um, bolshevik uh, terminology but that's what it boils down to one group of people exerting control over your words which means your thoughts and ideas where they 
they know better than you what ideas may be discussed in this. Well, it was an open marketplace of ideas, but not so much anymore. So Amy Schumer started it all by being painfully unfunny. She had a Netflix special, if you can remember back a few years, uh, where I think it was the leather special part two or something. I mean, she's done stand up before that wasn't horrible. And then she did this leather special and she came like 50 pounds and it just wasn't coming across. Um, Because when she did mostly sex stuff in like 15 years ago, she was skinny and she was younger. And it's like she had a cute vibe that came across like on stage and it, you got to stick with that vibe but you have to stick with the physical presentation of it otherwise it doesn't make sense you can't play cute sexy when you're 200 pounds it's like you have to you have to work into a different character and some comedians easily work into that different character but she she wasn't able to, to do that anyway so um people were downvoting that and um she told Netflix, so they Netflix got rid of the rating system or something bizarre like that. And um, then Brie Larson was, I think, the second stage with the Captain Marvel mo- movie. And before the came, that came out, she did an interview where she's um, she was sexist, racist, and ageist. I mean, there's no defense against that. And if you use her name in the thumbnail or the title, uh, you'll get the Brie Larson fans who will come in and just copy and paste these long... I, I blocked... Yes, I, I tried to block all of them. There's like 50 of these Brie Larson people, so I won't use her name in the comments. Um, it's like, yeah, she was sexist, ra- racist, and ageist. There's no, they define these terms. They create these, these, these Marxist propaganda control terms. It's like, well, we can use them also. Yes, she, she made some horrific, undefensible comments, and her fans tried to defend her also. Blonde-haired, blue-eyed Brie Larson doesn't like uh, people of European descent. So, um... So then uh, Rotten Tomatoes was getting downvoted. And, you know, keep in mind, the movie went on to make a billion dollars. It was also between the two biggest movies in film history, so it might have had something to do with it, because it wasn't, uh, wasn't a great movie. It's like, where's that sequel? It's been like, it's been like four years or something. Where's, that, where's Captain Marvel? Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Uh, you know, at that point, you better, you're better off with Monica Rambeau and just getting rid of Brie Larson in, in entirety. She's, I think she's, people are done with her. Um, anyway, so then Biden was the third kind of thing because he got elected, uh, allegedly, in, oh, you can't say that on YouTube, um, I mean, fairly, uh, in 2020, I mean, because, you know, the, the truth is so valid, it, it, it must be defended by censorship, um, by being so incompetent that YouTube had to uh, hide the down votes because Biden got in office and uh, the, the government... Um, uh, spokespeople were getting downvoted. The, the red-haired girl, who kind of reminds me of that Charlie Brown cartoon, and then the, uh, the she got replaced by someone else who's probably going to be replaced by someone else. Um, so those, those those things were press conferences were getting downvoted, and then when Biden would do speeches, that would get downvoted, and then he'd do live streams, um, and the live stream comment section wasn't open for some reason. Weird. Um, so uh, YouTube got rid of the uh, the downvotes because because Biden's in office and and he, he, people. YouTube and the government working together to hide feedback. <laughs> Is this America? No, not so much. I mean, really, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. Um, and, oh, and then before that, I think uh, social media kicked off. This is in 2016 to 2018. Anyone who helped Trump get elected, they kicked off you know, all those Alex Jones types. But there was like 100 channels associated that helped Trump get elected. And they, they said, like, uh, YouTube, we got rid of like 4,000 far, far-right extremist content shows. It was like... Yeah, but so you also having to get rid of everyone who helped Trump get elected in 2016. Literally every single big channel, you just you just yeeted all those guys. I think there's there might be like three remaining: Mark Dice, Paul Joseph Watts, and Louder with Crowder. And those guys are probably on their way out also. Um, but all the other channels, it, it's weird that you know Trump got elected in 2016. The, the people spoke; they had their feedback. It was literally called YouTube, and you kicked off all those channels. And then after that. Twitter and the rest of social media, well, they kicked off all those Alex Jones types also, and then they also kicked off, literally, the president himself. It's it's weird that the truth has to be uh, defended so well with, with censorship. Mm, strange. So you get this weird conspiracy of these uh, the media, NGOs, the government, uh, and these uh, global pus- puppet masters who are working together to silence one perspective and, and push a narrative. It's a... Um, it's a corporate capitalist Bolshevik movement. It's literally fascism. No, it's it's corporate capitalist 
Bol- if, the, if they're all Bolsheviks, they're not fascists. To make everyone as fake and, uh, I was going to say uh, the G word, but I'll say cringy as, as possible. Uh, no offense to those G word people. To make you think that society is actually further left than it is. It's amazing what you can do when you have almost total control over social media and mainstream media. If you control that, you control the, the country. It would be nice if our representatives gave us free speech in this digital town square. But they're not really our representatives, are they? Because they don't actually represent us. They represent foreign interests. Um, You know, form, like I always say, militias, and no hyperbole there. I'm very serious. Because you can't vote your way out of tyranny. You didn't vote your way into it. Um, so, uh, no, no, Trump or DeSantis, the external Messiah uh, solution complex that people have, um, that's not going to save us, not by a long shot. Even if those guys were suddenly granted power, they're not your guys. They really don't value free speech, the First or Second Amendment, if you look at some of their history. I, and I can tell you about some of the bills they signed off on, but, but on Telegram, Odyssey, bitch, you get not on YouTube. No, those aren't free speech guys. They're, they're not, they're not hashtag our guys. Not, <laughs> not at all, friendo. So, um... This stuff is uh, is not just a bad Amy Schumer um, leather special on Netflix. And, you know, it's kind of started off with the concept of, oh, we can work together to sort of loosely push this narrative, but also to protect um, our kind of left-wing spokespeople. And Amy Schumer, in some regard, is one of those. To, to protect these people, we're going to get rid of a... It's the concept of getting rid of public feedback, like getting rid of comments on um, news sites, which is freaking great. The more they do this kind of stuff, the more people spot uh, crop up with good like um, like dissenter. Though that didn't really pan out, but then it, it led people to Gab, Telegram, Odyssey, BitChute, other areas. They go, oh, we got to have free speech to talk. We're tired of these external sources controlling the narrative. So now, like, there's a a, a, a media report. Um, you just copy it, archive it, and you post it to Gab or something, and there you can talk about it on Gab and Telegram, even on Twitter if you're careful with um, you know enough dog whistles. I'm sure Mark Ruffalo, Ruffalo would want to like these people want to shut down any dissent. You got like, well, wait, what about the open marketplace of ideas? All these famous Supreme Court decisions on um, the free expression, you know, harsh sunlight, disinfecting sunlight, and the best ideas rise to the top. Like, what? A, no, no, no. Us on the left, we just happen to have the best ideas. Oh well. We don't trust you because, I mean, you guys, like the government, the media, is all is all like a history of, of liars, cheats, and thieves. I mean, they're the worst people on earth. Why, why would we trust you? That's a master-slave relationship. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. But thankfully, we have total control of the narrative so we can do anything, uh, anything they want. Imagine a YouTube where the government platform doesn't have a, a, the ability to downvote for the people to express themselves. It's a private company. Yeah, but it's the government's means of disseminating information. Really, shouldn't shouldn't the representatives have worked towards applying the First Amendment to that? Like, it's been, you know, the Internet's been around for decades, obviously, but it's really, really taken off, like, heavily in the past 15 years. Probably under, you know, Obama was when it, you know, it became just ubiquitous. It's like you, you would think that someone in office would, would work towards protecting free expression. It's you know literally number one, you know, the five articles, subclauses of, of the First Amendment being being so important. You would think you would think someone would focus on that to apply it to this new digital town square because it's so critically important. Otherwise, you're in a master slave relationship with these corporate NGOs and the government working together to push one narrative. That should f and terrify you. I'm not kidding when I say form these identity groups. Peaceful, legal, constitution protected. It's a little heavy for a YouTube video. Yeah, but you got to use the platform. I mean, this is never going to be a pop culture channel. I'm just not good at that kind of stuff. So every every pop culture video is kind of moves in a certain direction to, to get people to Odyssey, Bitch You, Gab, Telegram, whatever. Or subscribe star. It's two bucks a month. I post videos on there. There's one a new one up there. It's exclusive. So I post I'll post like exclusive videos to Subscribe Star. So you get your uh, your two two uh, two dollars worth. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys all next episode.